Today we'll be discussing Fed Data Check's Strategic Sourcing Dashboard. Our dashboard can be viewed by PSC code or by NAICS code. For now, we're going to look at it by PSC code. Here's page one of the dashboard. You can see here we have uh, some pie graphs showing you the small business transactions versus larger business transactions, uh, products versus services by obligated dollars and by transactions. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see all the vehicles here that are part of the GSSI Desktops and Laptops Initiative. This is GSA's uh, Desktops and Laptops Initiative program. And here's the listing here. So we have all the PIDs, all the vendors, all the transactions, and the obligated amount that has been spent on these contracts. Let's go ahead and look at page two, utilization rate by PSC. Every time we put a strategic sourcing program together, we fill out a form that will include uh, the PID with the vendor name, and then a PSC code list. This PSC code list is where we uh, look for spend where these vendors are actually being used. When we look at utilization, we look at the spend where they're being used and the spend going outside of these vehicles to other contracts and other vendors who are not a part of this program. I'm going to scroll down on this page and you can see that we have a chart for the utilization rate over time. We have the uh, utilization by dollar spend. Of course here in uh, September, dollar spend always goes up. I'm going to drill through here and now we're actually going to get to drill through and see all the specific PSC codes uh, by category. So right now we're looking at ADP equipment. I'm going to drill through now even more specifically to uh, the PSC code 7021, uh, which is specifically for computers. And we're going to look for leakage. Uh, leakage is defined by saying uh, an award was given to a, a vendor that had the same PSC code as one of our approved vendors but it was outside of the actual GSSI program. So here you can see in this column we have GSSI, desktops and laptops. That means that this award went to one of our approved vehicles. And all the descriptions of these awards seem like what you would expect. Uh, servers, computers, uh, more servers here. And I'm actually seeing a lot of Dell products. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick Control F and search for Dell, just to see what we get. And yeah, there's a lot of yellow on the screen now. We got a lot of Dell. So a lot of these vehicles are buying Dell products. I'm gonna scroll down to where leakage might be. So now we're in the list, in the part of the list where we don't have an approved vehicle. These are contracts going outside of this vehicle but have the same PSC code. And I'm starting to see some Dell purchases. So right here, we can scroll over and see how much was spent. So uh, a Dell server here is $23,000. Another Dell server, $11,000. $200,000 was spent here on uh, six Dell servers. So this would be a situation where we're saying leakage has occurred. But what do you do next? The next step would be receiving a leakage email. Just like a data error alert email that we send out automatically, we would send out an email like this automatically as well when we think leakage has occurred. It would have all of the contract's information in it, including the PID, the reference PID ID, uh, the product service code, and the obligated amount. What we would do is then ask the contracting officer to click on this link and fill out what we're calling the leakage form. Uh, this leakage form would have a number of questions that would be helpful to figuring out why the leakage occurred. The questions ask, uh, you know, were you aware of the strategic sourcing program referenced in this email alert? Uh, was the time available for the solicitation an issue? Was this cer a certified sole source by the contracting officer? And was there a unique specification for this solicitation that prevented you from using the SSV? The contracting officer hits yes or no on these questions can fill out this, this comment section with anything they want and hit submit. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. 
Then that data is graphically displayed on page three of our dashboard, the questionnaire page. Here, supervisory staff can go in and see if any trends are happening. Right here, you have all yeses for this one. It says, was the award a certified sole source by the contracting officer? Well, in this situation, they're saying yes, and you can go ahead and say that this probably wasn't leakage. Uh, you can look over here and say, you know, was the time available for the solicitation an issue? It wasn't for three people, but it was for five others. So you might want to reach out to them and ask them a few follow-up questions. The supervisory staff can also go in and click on the individual forms that the contracting officer submitted, and they can see any comments that may have been left there. Now let's go ahead and look at page four, our vendors page. This page is a more in-depth look at the approved vendors from the strategic sourcing program list. So if we scroll down here, we can actually see who these vendors are, what program they're with, all of these are GSSI, and you can go ahead and look at the vehicle. You can actually drill out to fpds and and look at this vehicle, see how often it's being used. Also, you can see how much money is being spent uh, towards each vendor and how many transactions each vendor has. At the top of the page, you can see uh, those uh, strategic sourcing vendors who've actually had a contract that's been terminated for cause, default, or convenience. This data goes all the way back to uh, FY12. So here we can see for this vendor, uh, they have had a few contracts terminated for cause. Uh, they were with Energy and the Department of Defense. And you can actually click on these links right here, these PIDs, it'll take you to FPDSNG, and you can take a look at those contracts. You can also see that there were some termination for convenience. Now let's go ahead and jump to page six, mismatched PSC codes. So whenever we set up this, uh, you know, a new strategic sourcing program, what we need to add are uh, PIDs, vendor names, and approved PSE codes to be associated with those vehicles. Uh, on this page, we're going to look at those PSE codes. In this column, you can see the strategic sourcing vehicles approved PSE codes. They're right here. Uh, just by taking a look at them now, I can tell they're all tech related, which makes sense because we're looking at a program that you purchase computers through. And it's helpful to look at this page to see if you need to add a PSC code to that approved list. Like right here, I'm seeing 7010 ADP system configuration, and there's actually a good number of them here. So that might be something that we want to add to the list so that we have a better picture of the utilization overall. This page is also useful for finding PSC codes that were probably input incorrectly. Looking right here, we have a vendor that's one of our approved vendors and the PSC code was for forage and feed and agriculture supply. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's unlikely, but let's drill out to FPDSG and make sure. All right, so it was one of our approved vendors. It was a $65,000 award and it was for software. So this is one of those situations where the contracting officer might want to go in and change that PSC code. When we notice that a mismatch PSC code has happened, we send another automated email. This will give the contracting officer all the information uh, for the contract. It'll have the PID, uh, the uh, award date, the PSC code, and the program that we're saying that that vendor is typically with. They might want to reach out to us and say, hey, you should add this PSC code to your official list, or they might want to go in, like this case with the forage and feed, and just change that PSC code and correct it to what it was meant to be. Now we're going to go to our final page, page seven, the administrator page. On this page, you can take a look at all the vehicles that have been loaded into our site for your department. Here we see other initiatives like FSSI, MRO, uh, FSSI OS3 office supplies and also GSSI desktops and laptops initiative the one that we've been looking at so let's open up this form quickly and you're gonna see what it looks like uh, to add a program to this uh, database so when we loaded GSSI we opened this form we went ahead and put in the name 
We added all the PSC codes that we thought should be associated with that. Then we added the PIDs, selected the status to be active, and put in all the vendor names. And as you can tell, there were a lot in this program. If you wanted to add a, a new uh, initiative to this site, what you would do is you'd click here in the upper left and it would open a new form. There you can do the same thing where you input the uh, strategic sourcing vehicle name, you put in your information, you can choose a PSC code using this drop down, and then put in the PIDs and vendor name right here. After that, you can just hit save and exit. And the next day when you come in and go to the dashboard, you'll be able to see that change implemented on the, on the website. Our subscribers have already seen an increase in utilization as high as 30% in just a few months. For more information on the strategic sourcing process, please contact me, Brian Yost, at 703-348-3013 or by email at bioast.com at potomacwave.com.